Hey, how's it going everybody? My name is Drew Creel and in this video what I wanted to do is show you five amazing tones that I made with the THR 30 wireless from Yamaha. Um, I wanted to first and foremost say thank you so much for watching my other video on the new THR 32. Um, that video has over 10,000 views which is really good for me um, for the last few years and uh, I just wanted to thank anybody that liked that video and subscribe to my channel because of that video and is watching today. Thank you so much for asking questions and I hope you found that video helpful and I know that you're gonna find this video helpful because we, we are gonna get into the tones, okay? I had a lot of questions about guitar tone and clean guitar tone and uh, just how I get different sounds. So in this video, what I'm gonna do is walk you through step-by-step step how I make different guitar tones with the THR. Um, I've got my THR30 connected to this laptop here and you're going to be able to see me kind of dialing in different tones and things like that. So stick around. This is going to be a really fun video and uh, we're going to get into some really great tones. So without further ado, let's do this. Okay, so the first tone that we're going to get into with this amp is a clean tone. Um, I, I, on my last video, I had a lot of people ask about clean tone. And I'll just sort of share just briefly like my philosophy for a clean tone. Um, basically, I want a sound that is totally crystal clear with uh, very little breakup, okay? Maybe maybe just a little bit, but the idea of a clean guitar tone for me and for, for most of my purposes is crystal clear, hi-fi, uh, no tube breakup, no gain or anything like that. So here is my clean tone. It sounds like this. And of course, I'm using um, I'm using an eight string Kiesel guitar. It's going into the 32 wireless <laughs> wirelessly with the Line Six. Um, uh, what is this G10T? So, so that's my clean tone. Um, let me just play a little bit more for you. Yeah, so, so that's kind of what I like. Um, and if you look at uh, the settings that I have, um, the first thing that you want to start with is this little area over here. And for, for clean, I actually really like the classic clean um, on, on this amp. Let's listen to what it sounds like when you go modern with it. Okay. Kind of gives it some more, some more gain. Um, Okay. And once again, I just, I, I wanted to mention, um, that your biggest, the biggest thing that affects the tone is the cabinet, the speaker cabinet, all of the settings, all of that stuff's important, but you almost want to start with a speaker cabinet and, and then sort of tweak from there. And I'm just peaking things just a little, just ever so slightly, um, on accident. So... So you can see how, how that drastically affects the sound of, of, of this, these amp models. I'm going to turn this down just a little bit because it's, it's peaking my vibe here. It's not cool. All right, so once I find a tone that I like, you know, I just go ahead and save it. And you, just, you would just go like that. Um, but I don't want to overwrite what I have there. So, you know, I spent like months playing with this modern setting and I liked it, but... After a while, I just realized that just plain old, the, just the classic clean is, is great. And I do like this boutique 2x12 uh, sound. I use 412s for all of the distorted heavy tones, lead tone. Um, sometimes I use a single 12 for clean, but I found that these 212 clean cabinets are the best. I don't really like the 10s. They got, they got some 10 options in here, like the American 410. Not, not really a vibe on that one. Okay. So, so that's my main clean tone, and I, I am using a little bit of compression here. Um, you know, you can use this compressor to really drive your, your tone a lot if you want. If, if that's if that's your, you know, if 
that's your scene, but for me, I don't like to drive it that hard. Yeah, I guess for this for this kind of stuff. For that kind of stuff, you might want to go with like the modern kind of vibe. Let's check that out really quick. I'm gonna lower this down a little bit so I don't overdo it. Turn that back, and it, of course it erases the sick cab that I had set up. Thanks a lot, Yamaha. Um, let's go with the where's my where's my boutique? There we go. So it's kind of nice. I'm still man. I'm still peeking this, and it's really teeing me off. Yeah. So so from from there you can you know you can drive it a little bit harder if you want if that's your scene. But yeah, I, I had this kind of set up for like almost like a month. So, you know, I will mention that I, I use this amp every single day. I'm a, I'm a music teacher at a school and then I teach private lessons. And this thing is literally by my side 24 seven. I have not 24 seven, but 12 hours out of the day usually. Um, and I have a lot of, uh, I have a lot of people ask me what, what amp to buy. And I've recommended this one. I've re recommended these Yamaha amps uh, you know, over everything. I've tried everything. I've tried the spiders. I've tried, um, the black star little, little amp that they have. Um, you know, I've, I've tried a, quite a few different things, but to me, this is the best. Let's check this out. I'm still peeking, man. Not, not into that. Stop. Just kind of... Yeah, it's it's cool for for things like that. So, okay. so that is my clean tone. I hope you enjoyed that. Hopefully, that helps you get a nice clean tone. Let's move on to the next tone. All righty then, we're gonna move on to the next guitar tone, and that is my slightly overdriven tone. I can't remember what I call it in here. Um, crunch, just called crunch. And surprisingly enough, I'm using the classic on this one too. Um, let's check this one out. Okay, uh, it sound it does sound a little different coming through um, coming through the DAW than it does uh, in the room, and that's just something to consider. If your tones don't sound exactly like mine, there is that last variable, which is the sound coming out of the speaker and into your room. Um, and uh, honestly, that's where the that's where the THR really pretty much owns every amplifier um, because they were designed by the speaker system was designed by people who make sound bars. They're really designed to be, you know, in a small bedroom or, or a small room. You know, when you start taking these into the big concert halls and larger venues, they start to just, they get owned, they get drowned out. And then that's when you're going to want to wheel in your half stack or your combo amp. Cause those, those things can push some air, but these little guys are great for like your bedroom. It's the THR. It's the third amplifier, totally new thing. Okay, so crunch. Um, I've got a little bit of delay on this, a little bit of hall reverb. Actually, more reverb than uh, than I thought. I'm using a 412, and to be honest, just not too long ago, I had this kind of this kind of setup. Okay, and I, I what I what I hate is anytime I make a switch, it it gets rid of my it gets rid of my guitar cabinet. You can hear, you can hear right away how how much the uh, um, you can you can hear how much the speaker cabinet really affects everything. So I'm going to turn this down because I keep overdoing it and stuff. But a little bit, just a little bit of chorus, 10% chorus, you know, 40% reverb on a hall reverb. Um, I've got, let's see what kind of echo I've got. Um, I guess it's analog. I don't know. Like, yeah, they, they did just do an update where you can, you can do digital, but for some reason in the THR remote app, which is what I'm using right now, you can't, uh, you can't switch that. That's super weird, but on the app you can. So heads up, you can switch between digital delay and analog, but analog is probably what I would use anyway. The gate, take it or leave it. 
we'll just turn it on. But this is this is like a nice, slightly overdriven. Slightly overdriven tone um, for playing like blues and things like that. You know, something that you can control with your volume knob. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw on a, um, real quick, I'm going to, I'm going to put on a little drum groove and, and jam for you guys with this sound. Um, just so you can get, kind of get a feel for it. Um, let's get something real, real funky. And I have to turn that down a little bit. You can control this over here and turn that up. But what it does is it turns your guitar down. It's kind of like a crossover. So, all right, so let's, let's turn my guitar back up. And let's play some blues. Now I can't get this to go away. Here we go. terrible guitar playing there but um a little bit of blues for you but that's kind of what i would what i would use this particular uh tone sounds the worst out of all of the other ones direct for for whatever reason that slightly overdriven sound is really hard to to get down when you um when you're going direct so that one you, i would have to spend more time with that if i wanted a direct signal which by the way i'm just plugged in just on the back of this amp i've got left and right out going straight into my interface i'm not recording with usb um, i'm just using the usb to, to do the thr remote so um that's what's going on with that one let's move on to the next tone all right everybody the next guitar tone that i have in my thr 30 is what I call a fusion tone. Um, anybody that's seen any of my other videos on my channel, I have this whole series, it's about 30 videos long. It's called Fusion Friday. And it was a period of time where I every Friday I would put out a video um, with some, some type of improvised guitar playing. Excuse me. Um, and uh, this is the closest guitar tone that I could make to some of my favorite tones that I got out of my Digitech my Helix, all of the sounds that I used for Fusion Friday. Um, but actually, I, I really love this, uh, this guitar tone, and it's, it's using this modern, this modern over here, and then special, right? So you just go right for the special for this. Um, you've got the modern 4x12 speaker cabinet. You've got the compressor going, a little bit of noise gate. It doesn't look like I'm even really using it that much. Uh, no chorus here. Um, a uh, healthy amount of uh, of echo, and then a plate reverb. So that that sounds like this. I'm gonna turn that up because it's it's so much quieter than the other ones. Let's try it again. You know, and depending on how I feel. Depending on how I feel, I might add more effects. You know, I might turn the, the delay up a little bit. 
Uh, the reverb is pretty low, but for most of the time, I don't want a ton of that stuff when I'm playing solos, especially if I'm playing a lot of like fast stuff. <laughs> But yeah, um, the compression the compression is really what makes makes this nice because you can get every single note to sort of essentially be the same volume. But um, looks like I took some 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 treble out, got a little bit of bass and mids uh, boosted. If you want to put some chorus on there, you can, but just be careful with that. I think it ends up sounding really kind of lame and two two eighties. Let's crank this chorus up a little bit. Yeah, it's kind of interesting, right? Yep, not usable. Never going to use that. Honestly, the only one that I would use is tremolo and chorus. Chorus for clean, um, tremolo for clean, or slightly overdriven, or that rare occasion where I'm trying to play some kind of country thing. Um, but phaser and cor uh, phaser and flanger. I mean, I don't know, man. I feel like they should just should give us some more delay options and some maybe even a pitch shifter uh, before they give us stuff like that. I just I guess those f effects are easier to make or something, but. But yeah, this usually stays off because I want it to. I want it to cut. And you know, sometimes I'll turn the effects off and pl and play rhythm with this sort of a thing. Um, but it's not. It's not really the sound for that. It's it's more of a lead tone. So, so that's uh, that's tone number three. Let's go ahead and move on to tone number four. This is my metal rhythm tone it sounds like this so so it looks like i forgot to rename this one too um so let's go ahead and rename that okay and if i want to save that i'm actually going to turn this up just a little bit But uh, yeah, there's there's no effects on that. Um, if you want to put a little bit of verb on there, you can. But uh, this this one uh, this one is really for like metal metal rhythm practice and things like that. Um, if I'm gonna play along with my band's tunes or something to demonstrate something. That's what I use this one for. Um, so let's put a little groove on in here. Man, I wish I wish it got louder than that, but here we go. The balance is not really correct yet, so we'll just turn this up a little bit. I guess, yeah. But yeah, that, that kind of stuff, you know?
Yeah, so that's uh, that's tone number four. And for the drums, I'm using Drum Genius. It's the, the best app for practicing uh, rhythm. Uh, time, feel, rhythm, jazz, country, blues, metal, funk, all of those things. All right, and the fifth and final thing that we're going to cover in this video is getting a, a bass tone, okay? That's sort of what I leave the fifth bank for is usually for bass. Occasionally, um, I'll have it set up for acoustic, so I'll, you know, I'll plug an acoustic electric guitar into here and sort of make a sound with that. So this thing is surprisingly good at that. And then I may even use the flat mode for pedals, like if I need to power the Helix um, through through this or just just for demonstration purposes. But if I'm being completely honest, this thing's got all the tones, you know, and I, I don't need to run it flat. If you have one of these, you running your pedals through this is going to be sort of a rare occasion, okay? I, at least that's what I've found. Um, and you can do that, and I think that's going to be my next video because that was, like, one thing that came up in the first THR video that I made is a lot of people were asking, like, hey, man, how does it sound with pedals? How does it sound with pedals? I think I had at least three different people ask me that. And I I haven't really messed around with that that much. Um, and I will make a video about that because I've got a Helix Stomp I want to run through this. But I just wouldn't I wouldn't find a need for that because when you want to be loud, you're going to use your, your Helix. Um, if you're playing a small gig or something, or you know maybe even you're playing at church or you're playing, I don't know, just like a jazz duo thing or... You're, you're backing up a singer-songwriter or you want to bring something to a recording session. I probably wouldn't bring one of these to a recording session, FYI. But um, for, for mo this is like for most playing purposes, for teaching, for um, that small coffeehouse gig. Um, that's about it. I wouldn't run a bunch of pedals into this. Um, that's not really what it's made for, but I think it can handle it. Now, if you want to run, you know, some keyboards into it, that's what you would use this flat mode for down here. Um, keyboards. Uh, if let's say you're a violinist or a cellist, you know, I would use these guitar amp models for that. You can you can get some crazy good tones with a violin, electric violin, through one of these too. Um, the school that I work at, the the violin the violin teacher there uh, showed me a bunch of stuff with like essentially what happened is I let her use one of these and she just sounded so great through the THR. Um, anyway, all that to say, let's go over the bass. Let's talk about bass. Um, so one of the, one of the ones that I like the most for just like a warm bass tone is the, is the boutique mode. Okay. And, and we can get, we can try to get that a little bit cleaner than that. Um, Okay, let's see if we can push it a little bit harder. Um, but yeah, this this thing is great for for bass. We're gonna turn this a little bit of chorus in there. Let's give it a little bit more gain. But so I'm using like like an active carbon bass. The name of this bass is is called Shrek. Um, my students named it that. But um, this, this type of bass is very similar to like a Stingray, like a Music Man style bass. Um, um, but uh, the, the boutique sound is great. Let's try the modern really quick. So very, very different. You gotta, it almost takes the bass all the way out. This is more for like, slapping and it's just got more of a grindy kind of sound to it let's get the volume up come on now yeah i don't know i i don't really like this one i think they're just trying to make a distorted bass tone but the one that i like the best y'all is classic just go straight for the classic mode Oh, there's the bass. Now it sounds like bass. It 
to me that's like the most usable bass tone and I've got like onboard electronics here so I'll kind of find sort of a middle ground with that stuff I mean to me like I would play I would play a set with that with that sound, you know? And uh what's great is you can save you can save that that sound. And if you have the THR30, you can just go right out of the back of this. You can go right out of the back. Reverb and bass, man. What a what a great combo, right? That was a joke. So, um, yeah, so I, I would, I would consider playing th this with this amp. Um, you could use this as your stage monitor and then it's going to take the signal from the back of there and then your, your sound guy can drive that to all the wedges and put it in the mains. Um, but yeah, I think, I think you could use it for that purpose. For guitar, it's a little different because guitar players don't usually just use one sound the whole time. They've got different things they want to turn on and off and, the THR is not quite there yet uh, for that kind of purpose. Um, but uh, this is my favorite bass sound that I've been able to make. A nice kind of, you know, a little bit extra bass, a little bit extra top, take the mids out a little bit, um, decent amount of compression. Can actually turn that up a little more. Yeah, pretty cool. I'm going to jam for a little bit. We'll jam it out. Thank you. 